So, you brood of vipers. Doesn't seem like your optimum good news way to start a sermon. Brood of vipers. Clearly trying to win over the crowd. Um, he clearly has them kind of in there, eating out of his hand, you might say. And the context of these readings is December 13th, 2015. It is our context. Unless you have been living in a cave, there has been a lot of media over the last week, month. And in the last week or so in particular, we've heard different Christian voices starting to chime in on various aspects of the political process in ways that land on the readings for today. I don't think I've ever said this in a sermon in 20 years of ministry, but there are some Christian voices speaking in the world today that are wrong. They are simply wrong. And I think it's important to say that out loud, just as we demand different religious communities to call out people and their traditions that are wrong. It's very, very important that we do that. And today, this boils down to one piece of the text and our understanding of it. Now, I didn't grow up on a farm, but I figured this out, that the wheat and the chaff are not grown in different fields. It's a shocker, but the wheat and the chaff actually not only are grown in the same field, they're grown on the same plant. In effect, they are a part of the grain. Let's say this a little differently. So the good guys will be gathered up into the barn and the bad guys will be burned with unquenchable fire. Picture your favorite movie trailer voice on that, right? In my experience in the world, and as we interact with Jesus Christ and his ministry, it turns out that in the world, there are simply men and women. It's kind of tricky, and also when we add up good guys and bad guys, we often leave out an entire gender, let alone other issues that come with that language. But it is important for us to remember the wheat and the chaff are not grown in separate fields. Now that's not to say that we don't run into people in this world who do evil things, or who do hurtful things, or who are hurt and lash out in ways that are painful and not appropriate. Or that people who get lonely and depressed do things that we might not want to see happen and maybe aren't healthy for them or those around them. Or we might see people do amazing things that are great and good. But at the end of the day, the wheat and the chaff all come from the same place. If you caught last Sunday's readings, you would have heard about Fuller's Soap, and you would have heard about the refining of silver. There's not the bad silver and the good silver. It's just silver. And it goes through this process that the silver probably doesn't want to be purified. It gets heated up unbearably hot, and the bad part is all scraped off. Or we think of the fuller soap as being a bleach for fabric. The fabric probably doesn't want it. The fabric's probably screaming out, you know, I'm pale enough already. Why don't you pick on some of those who aren't? And yet we all get the fuller's soap. In this season of waiting and preparation, it is a season of grinding off our edges and corners. It is a season of turning towards God in a way that asks for forgiveness and pushes us towards living in new ways. There are a couple of things that happen in the gospel text that we have for today that I think are kind of 
interesting in what doesn't happen, kind of the absent part of the reading. We have people coming up to John the Baptist after he's just basically verbally flogged them, and yet they still want to talk to him. And they say, well, what should we do? And we get that one image, of course, of the coat and the food. If you have two coats, give one to somebody who has none. If you have more food than you need, likewise. So we get that basic piece. But we get these two other people that come up. Well, I'm a tax collector. What should I do? I'm a soldier. What should I do? It's interesting to me that the answer to both of those questions is not find a new line of work. You notice that? John the Baptist does not say to the soldier, there's no more use for you. Hang it up. Become a plumber. Nowhere in the text does it say that. The tax collector, likewise. There is not this sense that we are oblivious to the challenges of this world. That's not what is happening here. But there is a different way in which we handle it. This last week, I have seen a quote that was written in the 1950s become extremely prominent. It was from a bishop in Germany uh, in the 1960s, early 60s, passed away in the mid-60s. He was very famous initially as a war hero after the First World War. He was a very prominent U-boat captain, uh, way before U-boats were cool. And uh, it, was, it was a hard war, but he became a nationally known war hero, who then, as you do, went to seminary, became a pastor, and served a church just to the south of Berlin. He was arrested in 1937 for his opposition to the Nazi government and was imprisoned for eight years, uh, one of the longest imprisonments. You might not know the name Pastor Martin Niemöller, but odds are you know the quote because you can find it on magazine covers this week. First, they came for the communists, and I did not speak up because I was not a communist. Then they came for the Jews, but I did not speak up because I was not a Jew. And then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak up because I was not a trade unionist. And then they came for the Catholics, and I did not speak up because I was not a Catholic. And then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak up. I think these remembrances are important for us because as people of faith in a scary world, we hear voices that seem to suggest to us that as people of faith, our safety and security is the most important thing in the universe. I cannot find that written anywhere in the Bible. In fact, there are some things in our tradition that might suggest that there is hazard involved with following Jesus Christ. When we take our safety and security as individuals and prioritize instead our reaching out to those communities that are marginalized, those where groups are saying they should not be allowed into the country, when we say that those who are on the outs, those are the ones we reach out to, there's no promise that it's because it's cool. There's no sense in reading the Christmas stories that God says, this is going to be fun. This is going to score points with the neighbors. This is going to move you up socially. You're going to be ahead of the trend. It's going to make you safer, richer, make your kids' teeth straighter. Nowhere is that promised. But what is promised is that God in this world is about bringing life and hope at the edges where there is brokenness and hurt. And when we are in those places, 
we are working with God as opposed to working in our own place all on our own. And when we work with God, the world changes. So I would encourage you, as you hear and are bombarded by the media, particularly in an election cycle that's like this week, please, right? <laughs> that we are mindful that as people of faith, we are Easter people who are always hopeful in tomorrow. That we are reaching out to lift up the broken and the cast aside. Not because it's safe or cool. But it's because what Jesus calls us to do. Amen. Please stand as you are able.